Hey everybody, welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Happy Friday. Glad you could make it. Let's get this whole thing going here. Get things started off right. Hope your Friday is doing good. Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. <laughs> you should be looking at this. Hold on. <laughs> All right, I had to turn the fan off. Now I feel much better. <laughs> <laughs> a lot quieter, much better, much better sound. Oh, I gotta turn the phone off too. See, you gotta just do all these things like I think I know what I'm doing. And as always, like I think I know what I'm doing. All right, what's up, everybody? Thanks for watching the live stream. This is the Ham Radio Crash Course. I am Josh KI6NAZ. What are we doing here? Well, as always, uh, the live stream is focused on being an inclusive environment to introduce people to new aspects of ham radio or just to think about things they already know about in a different way. And today is going to be no different. We're going to be talking about EDCing your handy talkie, your HT. What does that mean? What are some things to think about? What are some interesting aspects that you may not have ever thought of before? So, what do I recommend? Well, homework for this week or this weekend, if you've got the time. Sit yourself down, look at the programming of your radio and think about some of the things we're gonna talk about. Maybe some of the accessories you carry, how you carry it, all things that we'll be covering in the live stream. So yeah, everybody in the chat room is blowing up saying <laughs> it's very hot where they are right now. And I don't doubt it. It's warm here, but uh, not, not killer hot. So yeah. Somebody got their extra. Congratulations. Uh, KE8HWD got his extra. That's right. Congratulations to him. Very good. Hot Arizona. Brad in the house. Hello from Kansas. Asheville, North Carolina. We got Australia. What's up, Peter? Right on. Venice Beach. Oh, uh, Wicked's in Venice Beach. Right on. 86DM Dennis, my buddy there on the Twitter. The ham Twitter. That's a space to go. If you're not already on Twitter... Totally recommend you do. I am Hoshnasi on Twitter. There are so many cool ham radio operators on Twitter. It makes it a much more fun thing. For those that are asking in the chat, how do you get in the Discord? Pretty easy. You take the link in the description to the Discord. And there will probably be a link from one of the admins when they hop on a little bit later, time permitting. We will likely be doing call-ins later depending on time. So if you have questions, consider calling in and asking those. And we will always, as always, <laughs> be doing our Discord live after chat, which will be, again, Discord in the link. You join Discord, scroll down until you see the after chat or the live stream area, and there'll be all those little faces. Those are the people chatting. Click that button, you'll join it. And there's a text chat and a voice chat for that, so you can ask questions. So we have lots and lots of news. Let me just show you some of the news items we're going to be covering or talking about. Why is that? That is wrong. That is the chat. Let me change that real fast. Let's see, where did it go? What's going on here? Should be the, the Facebook page. Hmm. There we go. So, good news. Good news. The Oh, hey, we got a question. Fidget McFidget. Oh, wow, $30. Thank you. Uh, value for value decided to give you double the AWR fee. Wow. Your course alone helped me pass to general in one go. Fidget McFidgetson. <laughs> Fidgetson. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you. And congratulations to you. That's awesome. Golf Bravo. Hello from Argentina. So, yeah, good news. Ethan, out of the kindness of his heart, went out and bought an HRI 200 and has reactivated our Wires X node. So we are USHRCC link again active. We are still on Yesu System Fusion and we are still on DMR and they are all connected. So you can get back on the HRCC um, Yesu System Fusion, which is super, super awesome. And Ethan, again, thank you for all your hard work. Thank you to all the admins that are involved in the nets that we put out the nets we do and all that stuff you guys are awesome so ethan again thank you so much for, for what you did that's that's just awesome hey ethan there he is in the chat thanks ethan all right so quirky qrp still on vacation good for him he deserved it he'll be back august 4th but in the meantime wanted to let you know if you use the coupon code 
Quirky QRP HRCC. The text is in the description of this video. You get $5 off whatever your order is, which is pretty cool. So I wanted to mention that. Recently, I updated the brew crew list of all our beers that we review here on the channel. So if you are a patron on the brew crew side, it's updated. Speaking of brews, I'm going to be drinking a Founders <laughs> uh, Barrel Runner Mosaic Hopped Ale aged in rum barrels. So I'm trying something a bit different. I normally drink a lot of stouts. I like the barrel aged stuff. I like the big heavy stouts, but I'm thinking maybe a lot of companies are starting to go lighter with their barrel aged stuff. And I thought, I'm going to try it out. Whoa. Oh man, I don't know if this is lighter at all. I'm smelling it. It's strong but looks very light. Looks can be deceiving. I no doubt believe this is going to be um, deceiving. I got my Victory at Sea ballast point goblet. I went to a uh, Victory at Sea event a while back, but yeah. All right, let's give it a taste. And I got a fly flying around here, so I have my uh, bug assault. If I see that thing land, I'm pulling out the bug assault and I'm taking it out. Mm. That's pretty good. Real good. A little bit of the sweetness, but not the heavy um, mouthfeel of the stout. So, excellent. So, the Brewcrew list was updated. If you're interested in knowing my thoughts on beer reviews and the beers I've drank on the live stream, check out the Discord. The link is in the description. We have, we have another giveaway planned. This giveaway is for next week, okay? Next week, next Friday. The way you get on it is join the Discord. Link is in the description, or maybe Ethan will post the link for us. Go to the HRCC Shacks chat room and post a picture of your shack. Show me your shack. That's what it's going to be. I'm going to pick a winner. The winner is going to get a dipole kit, a cut dipole kit. Cut it to your own band of, of whatever you like. The descriptions will come. This giveaway is sponsored by Spawny, our friend Spawny on the Discord, who I think has done like three or four giveaways now. He is, uh, man, he's a great guy. I appreciate what he does. Uh, so active on the Discord, helping people out, and is quite the character. So make sure you go check him out and go join the Discord, and you could possibly win if you show me your shack. That'll be what we're going to do in the next stream, most likely for a good portion of it. So thank you, Spawny. Tonight, we're going to do something a bit special. This is the last thing I've got to say. Well, no, a couple more things. Um, actually, let me show you the dipole. I've got a picture. That's right. So this is the dipole kit, comes from uh, Kit Projects, and it is a basically just a, a dipole kit. Nicely 3D printed dipole kit that you can cut anything from 10 to 80 meters. Pretty cool. Thank you, Spawny. I've uh, got that. Oh, next month. Man, sorry, a lot of news. I promise we're going to get to the slides. Uh, next month on August 24th is the HRO in San Diego's Hamboree which is not just manufacturers coming out to show off their stuff, let you go hands-on, but there's going to be 25 swap meet spaces. I'm giving you the heads up because I will be in attendance for the event. I'm planning on driving down in the morning, and I'll stay as long as I can. Closes at 2 p.m., but I'm thinking maybe if there's enough people that want to, we'll go grab some food somewhere local. And that's a really nice location um, where that uh, ham radio outlet is, so we'll go check that out as well. In other um, HRO news, there is a sale going on on Kenwood, and I wanted to make a note that the D72A is on sale. Uh, sale price is $379.95. So if you're interested in getting into satellite comms on your HT to work the, the low Earth orbit FM birds, this is the radio you want. bit expensive still, uh, but it is full duplex, which is great for working satellite and is embedded APRS, so you can work with the ISS too. Okay, is that it? Ah, yes, the last thing, the last thing. This should be fun. I hope this works out well. We are going to wrap up the show after we complete the, the patron stuff. Again, thank you, patrons. We will be wrapping it up with a starting CW training. It's going to be just a couple of minutes of copying two characters. We're going to start with the Koch method, and this is all due to some work I'm doing with the Long Island CW Club. We have a series of videos that we're putting out that I worked with Howard on, on how to get your CW proficiency up and how to get better at CW. So we're going to start easy, two characters, K and M, taking it right out of the Koch method playbook, but the Long Island CW Club in their classes goes into much greater detail into learning words and everything else. So 
kudos to Howard on setting a lot of that stuff up and helping me out. And we're going to be talking about that. So JD, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Thanks for the video. Studying for my license now. Awesome. Keep it up. Uh, goes both ways, buddy. Keep it up for yourself. I'm very excited when people tell me that they are getting their license. All right. So let's have a sip. And there they are. EDC, your handy talkie. Handy talkie is what HT stands for. When we say HT, we're referring to, you know, small little handheld radios like this one. Uh, and this one has a, a see-through, a see-through lanyard. It's it's like everything I own is a green screen. <laughs> Not okay with green screen. KG5 QIA Douglas says, I wish I had a shack. A shack can be anything. It can be. Uh, a table in which you have laid out your HTs. If you have one HT, that's your shack. Don't be ashamed. You don't have to have a big booming shack or anything like that. Just show me what you're what you're working with. That's what I care to see. I, I want to make it fun for everybody to know that everybody starts in different places, and some people are into vastly different areas of amateur radio. So don't worry about it. Just post it there, and you're be in. That's it. You're be in. Mm -hmm. Good. Zach, I like it. A shack can be an outhouse. <laughs> Random fellow says, where's the green water gun? Hey, he hasn't watched the live streams in a while. I haven't used those in a, in a little while. Uh, right on. Very good, very good. Okay, so we're talking about EDCing your HT, right? Some of you are like, I get it, right? You clip your HT on, you turn it on, you hit the road. That's it. And that's me with my FT60, which was my first amateur radio. And for a lot of you, that's going to be good enough most of the time. A lot of what I'm going to talk about are... I wouldn't call them advanced things, but things to think about. Is he going to land? He's landing. Okay, nobody nobody move. Nobody breathe. Got him. <laughs> this, this is yellow. This isn't even green. Anyway, bug assault. It is the best gift you can give a friend. Absolutely. The bug assault is awesome. So I get it, right? You can just throw this on your belt and be off to the races. That's true, but there's more to think about, a little bit more. So we're going to start talking about the radios themselves and the radio that you may want to think about EDCing. The bands that it supports is going to be one of the first things you think about. These are actually the main things I like to think. Oh, man, KD2KVZ, amateur radio. Always enjoy your videos and have learned good stuff from watching. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. I appreciate the support. Uh, that is a name that may have a YouTube channel attached to it with some videos on it. So you guys may want to go check out check out their work there. So if that's the case, go check them out. Uh, can I? I'll have to go back and look at it. I can't click the link. So I'm in my chat program. So can't break out, but I'll check you out after the fact if that's the case. So bands that uh, you want to support, likely 2 meters, 70 centimeters, although there are some 220 out there. And that's good too, right? If it's popular in your area. So my point here is... Buy a radio that is in the bands that popular in your area. Most likely it's 2 meter, 70 centimeters. Okay, features. Think about the features that you want to have. For me, I really like to have GPS, APRS, and a bit of digital if you can splash that in. Again, really important, assume the digital is based off of what's popular in your area. There's nothing worse than buying a Yaesu radio that does Yaesu system fusion, maybe wires, and you find out, this is D-Star country, boy. Um, so talk, maybe talk to your clubs. Maybe go to the ham radio outlet if you have them. If there's a ham radio store, you're very lucky. Talk to some people. Um, maybe find out who's local in your area, local hams. Contact them. How do you contact them? Well, you can do a search, a proximity search on the FCC website. Find hams that are in your area. And then go on QRZ. See if they've got a page. If they've got a page, maybe drop them an email. There you go. Pretty easy. Material. The next thing to think about is the material that the radio is made out of. Something that is rugged is going to be better, but all of this must be balanced against cost. When you EDC something, you're increasing the chances it's going to take damage, <laughs> take damage, or just be lost. Case in point, okay? So here is a swath of EDC or radios that I have EDC'd. The one that um, does not belong here is this one, the D72A. And I know I just talked about how great this radio is. It is, but I just beat the crap out of this radio when I EDC'd it. It's not very rugged. It's really more of like a scientific device, a handy scientific device and all the things it does. Very powerful. But you don't want to throw it around and EDC it necessarily. Andrew Thompson, 
two dollars is not a lot however i appreciate what you do thank you that means everything to me it helps the channel go in and, and keep doing what we're doing so i appreciate that i i do and every little bit helps so thank you um dennis dunderdale asks what does edc stand for every day carry uh not electronic daisy carnival i believe they came after which is the uh, edm electronic dance music scene so um make sure you don't confuse the two everyday carry right that's what it means and so when you're everyday carrying bow fangs are great why are bow fangs great none of the features but none of the cost and they're pretty rugged they really do take a beating the ft60 i'm going to talk about this one later uh only single band as far as what it receives but real reliable great receiver my current edc the ft2dr with the abri there <laughs> Oz DC. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Yeah, you called it. There's an Abri antenna. In fact, I've got two. Uh, this is the 18 inch and the big boy, the 42 inches right next to it. Uh, this is my EDC radio currently, but this is a whole lot of radio to lose or damage, right? So consider that when you're thinking about buying a radio. And then sometimes a little neck lanyard Alinko like this one. It's an old radio folding uh, antenna, goes around your neck, and you can just use it simply have it on you all the time real lightweight runs on four double a cells and this thing lasts a really long time on a charge so things to consider right so next you've got your radio now you got to think about antennas and i and i have two very large juxtaposition a very long 42 inch abri antenna and a tiny uh, diamond receiver Pretty bad transmitter, but not a bad receiver antenna. A short antenna is going to pack away really nicely, but you're not going to have the best transmit capability. Sometimes not great receive either. Longer obviously will get in the way, particularly how you carry it. Oh, Walter Whitman, thank you very much. Appreciate the appreciate the support and the super chat. The the as you move in length you gain performance out of your antenna both on receive and transmit the problem is when you snap out an abri or a signal stick or you're just using a 771 nagoya they start getting a little top heavy right and that may cause it to fall over that can happen not a big deal if it falls over on a table but i've definitely had a radio fall over a table and then the weight just carried it off the end of the table and onto the ground the advantage of some of the longer antennas is that they'll fold up, the Abri being the example. Signal Stick is a very good antenna um, to, to EDC with because lifetime warranty on the Signal Stick, and that's again from Signal Stuff. If you search Signal Stuff, Signal Stick on Google, you'll find them. Not affiliated with the Ham Radio Crash Course other than we're friends, and I like the stuff they make. They make good stuff. Lifetime warranty on that bad boy, great for EDCing. They come in uh, SMA, male and female, and BNC. So you can think about that. And then the, wow, man, XL Pro 2K. Thank you, everybody. All the support is really humbling. I, I very much appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Um, BNC adapters are great for when you're thinking about disconnecting your radio from your antenna and then like putting in a bag. I will often carry a messenger bag and I'm actually gonna show a couple of my bags when we get to the end here that I actually just disconnect the antenna from, put the radio in the bag, and I don't, I don't run it until I really need to. So keep that in mind. BNCs are good for that. Not all clips are the same. Um, going back to the comment right in the beginning, I'm going to throw this on my belt, and I'm going to go. I don't really use the belt clip that often. The reason I've had belt clips break. Although Baofangs are actually pretty decent belt clips because it's a, those screws our metal plate into metal on the chassis. Man, Evan, you're the man. Thank you, buddy. Great topic. Thanks for all you do, Josh. Thank you. And Evan is uh, one of our admins on the Discord side, so appreciate it. Um, so <laughs> KD2KVZ says, uh, <laughs> Balfang clips suck. They're not bad for the price, but you can break them really easily, even though they mount in metal. The problem you'll have on the one that you can see in the picture here is that the plastic will break, the actual uh, hinge point on the clip will will snap off the best the best clip is still from my first radio that uh that ft6 ft60 man that clip is great very very good clip one of the worst clips worse than the balfangs is the clip that i got for the d72 oh man 
Not an EDC radio, guys. I like them, and I think you can carry them in a bag and keep them safe. Maybe put them in a thong, one of those little cases. But, yeah, not a, not a big fan of that. So, yeah. All right. Enhance. Enhance. Here we go. So speakers. Quick point on speakers. That radio in the middle is the Anytone 878. Probably the loudest speaker on any HT I've ever owned or been around for that uh, point. If you know of a, a one louder than an 878, let me know because that thing is shockingly loud. Speakers, let me take a sip here. I'll finish my thought. Uh, KD2 KBZ. I thought the FT70 had a great speaker too. And it does have a good speaker. Then I heard the 878. It blows the doors off of the FT70. It blows the doors off of every radio. Most speakers on handhelds are one watt. I believe the 878 is like 1.6 to 2 watt output. It is ridiculously loud. And it's covered with like a faceplate. I've got it right here. It's covered with like a faceplate. You can't even... There's no. This is the speaker grill and the mic. I don't know where the sound comes from. Maybe the bottom? Anyway, this is the loudest HD you can buy. Prove me wrong. I'll bring it with me to San Diego. You bring your HTs and we'll do a, a loudness test. <laughs> but seriously. So speakers, EDC radio, you may not have it cranked up all the time, but the ability to crank it up when you need it, when it's loud, excessive loud, ambient noise, is a good thing. Something to consider. All right. So accessories. We'll, we'll dabble in. Man, Brian Sachs, longtime listener, first time spender. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Man, you guys, this is... Uh, extremely humbling. I thank you so much. This is awesome. Um, could I'm, I'm getting a little teary. It's really hot. I'm sweating, guys. I promise. But I seriously appreciate that. Thank you. Um, accessories are wonderful, right? But they're highly personal. For me, uh, if I'm going to have any accessories, it's likely going to be a uh, hand mic like that. Hand mic. <laughs> W5KUB says, cool off some. I will. Thank you, buddy. Am I sweating? I look good. The hand mics are uh, fantastic when you just have them on your backpack shelf. Man, Lee, Lee Harrell, first live stream, brand new ham, just started following about two weeks ago and joined Patreon yesterday. I've got a lot to learn, but I'm sitting for my test next month. By the way, my EDC is a G19. <laughs> that's a gun. That's a gun joke, guys. I like it. Uh, I think so. EDC in California, G19 is tough. I usually go something a little bit smaller. Real undercover. Yeah. Um, so the hand mic that I have pictured is the Yesu hand mic, which is fantastic. Hand mics for me must have an audio port so that you can attach an earbud. My personal preference. Some people like the type that come up through the inside of your shirt and then clip to the ear, like the one that I reviewed from Bridgecom. Those work well. Those are good, too. Angel D. Mercedes, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so you kind of have your choice. And what I recommend is you try it out. Amateur radio is all about finding something that works for you. And if you like it, it doesn't matter what other people think. I like hand mics. I think they're great. But if you want to do something else, that's okay too. Rob, there's the guy right there. K-E-8-H-W-D. Thanks for everything you do. You created one hell of a community at the HRCC. Good to Got to go to work. I'll finish the vid later. Uh, Rob just upgraded to extra. If you're not following him on Twitter, do that. I was uh, very humbled again with the community and how open they were in saying that was, you know, they, they poured out the well wishes to Rob for getting his extra. So that's awesome. N1UFO Gabriel says, thanks for the FT891 FT8 video. Oh, that was, I'm glad you liked it. I didn't know how that was going to land. I had a lot of fun working with Shane on that one. That was Shane's voice in the front that says, uh, help me, FT8 man, you're my only hope. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, thank you again. Appreciate that. Uh, the other thing I like as far as accessories go when you can get it is Bluetooth. Bluetooth is a nice accessory, but Will Ladd, does he feel like an exotic dancer when we do? <laughs> yeah, hold on. Let me, can I, can I grab this? I can. I'm going to just put it right there. There you go. I've got it now. Thank you very much. I can just reach up. I can just reach up and pull it down. I knew I needed that little space on the top here. I knew I needed that for something. <laughs> so um, Bluetooth is great, but the thing to keep in mind, 
radios in Bluetooth can mean a ton of different things. It doesn't mean that it will work with all your devices. In fact, I have found, um, <laughs> Rob, I'll allow that comment. Uh, T-Bone asks, where's the party light? So I'm in a new shack and the green screen behind me is free floating. I have yet to figure out how to rig the party light, but I will do it for the next stream. I apologize. I, um, it's been a project getting this all rolled out, but thank you. And thank you for reminding me. I got to go do that. So Bluetooth is not the same as it used to be back in the early 2000s. There are different specs of Bluetooth now, and that allows all kinds of uh, different devices <laughs> that you may not be able to support with your radio. So keep that in mind. You need to look at the spec for the Bluetooth before you go and attach it to the accessories. I'm going to pull these down too. Uh, 86 Dennis looks like it's one of those streams. <laughs> Hosh like the Christmas lights one. <laughs> Thank you for all you do. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Uh, Brad says, my EDC is a G43 and an FT2D, fave ham channel, KM7EMT. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now I will, I will fetch my, uh, my frozen, uh, rag that I use out in the garage. So thank you very much. Uh, Kevin, you recommend a good Bluetooth module for an HT. Tons on the market, but many have bad reviews. No, I don't yet. Um, so, so far all my dabbling into Bluetooth has been with radios that support Bluetooth. But I'm going to do that because, uh, frankly, I think that there is a lot of work that needs to be done there to study some of these devices. I think that um, it, it, like, I have a UE Boom speaker. It's awesome. But it just doesn't work with most radios and most dongles, for that matter. So I think I'm going to do a little work on that. Not to mention cars. Cars have a nightmare with Bluetooth and radio for some reason, specifically ham radio. Nope, enhance. All right, power. So you're going to have your HT on you, right? And the thing I recommend when you first get an HT, particularly when you're thinking about EDCing it, and likely you should probably look this up on Google before committing to it, start that thing up, uh, put it on scan mode, and then let it run out. Transmit a couple of times, 10% of the time, 20% of the time. See how long it lasts, okay? That will give you an idea of how long that battery will go. David Aaron says, might as well join the fun. My EDC is a G27 and a D74. <laughs> That's pretty nice. That's a classy EDC right there, guys. So run that battery down and, of course, time it so you know how long that battery will last for. I don't want to keep going back to the 878, but it is an impressive radio for how long that battery lasts. You're talking about days that it will run on receiving and not run out. Mark B, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that a lot. Appreciate that. Lee E asks, do AA and AAA battery pack adapters work? So great question, and I should have put it on the slide, so thank you for bringing it up. Absolutely, they do. The problem is... Some radios aren't designed to put out full power on AA cells. Case in point, my FT2DR right here, the uh, AA cell on this one will not bring out the 5 watts. However, the FT60, the much older radio on the 6, I think I have a 6 AA or AAA cell tray for this thing, will put out full power when it's running on the, uh, the AA cell or the AAA cell, say, uh, AAA cell tray say that three times fast or five times fast. So it depends on the radio. And that's something you should Google as well when you're looking at that. A lot of MCOM guys like battery trays. They are uh, great for when you're in a situation where you're off your main battery, you need to go to something different. You're likely in relatively close, so you don't need a lot of power, so you may not need the max power out of the FT2DR. But still, it's nice to have that option. So I'm a big fan of battery trays, although I didn't put in the slides, and I appreciate you for mentioning it. And I also like battery disconnectors that allow you to plug into the car. Wow, Ox Dexy, thank you, $50. Heads up, you're one of the people that convinced me to get my license. Just got my call signed two days ago. Keep up the good work, and I love your content. Also, uh, the XO in front of my name is 0X. Just got a thing with... Okay, so that's what I thought is that was like a hex call out. So if you ever play around with hexadecimals or you're reading memory dumps or whatnot, they're usually prepended by 0x. So got it. Very good. I also support hexadecimal. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, and the last point. A lot of radios like the Baofeng with the Extendo battery 
has the capability to plug into it directly. So keep that in mind when you think about, uh, <laughs> yeah, seriously, when you think about laying something down like, oh man, K8MRD stuff now is getting in on it. My EDC is a, dude, that's the EDC I want is a Glock 42. Man, I, that is the one I really want is a Glock 42 and an Alluance HD1. Good radio too, gotta say good radio. Follow K8MRD stuff if you have not also, by the way. Yeah, he's a good guy. I know, because I met him in person. Cool dude. Like to hang out with him longer. Maybe not just in a ham radio environment. Like actually just hanging out and chilling. All right. Power considerations when you start figuring out how long your battery is going to work for is going to be vital to how long you're going to operate. Uh, that D7, God, I don't know why I'm smashing the D72 so hard. Sorry, D72. This battery lasts like four hours uh, when you operate APRS. Not a great ADC, EDC radio, but really good for connecting to your laptop. Really great as a TNC. Really great for other stuff. FT2DR works a full day. Easy. Chugging along with APRS. If you turn off GPS, a APRS runs even longer. The 878 runs longer than them all. It's only DMR only DMR. I'm kidding, of course, but you get the idea. Richard Vincent says, thanks for helping me pass the technician exam. Congratulations. I'm glad you did it. And now start thinking about that general. Get on that. Get on them HF waves. We need more people on the HF wave. Oh man, Jason Siebert, make it rain. <laughs> My EDC is an MNP9 and an FT2D. That's it. <laughs> I can't stay on the script because of the super chats. Uh, Dennis has, has me pegged, I think. How many slides are we in right now? I wish I put numbers on these. Uh, consideration on power, add a battery disconnect with a car charger. That's going to be extremely helpful. And uh, consider car chargers, keep them in your car or in your kit in case you don't know if you're gonna be in the same car. And look for radios with external charging ports or ones that can be charged directly to the battery, like the Baofeng Extendos, as I mentioned in that. Brad Hibbs. Thanks for the topic. My EDC is a P365 and an FT60, considering an HT upgrade. Recommend Recommendation, FT2, FT3, or AT878. I knew I was going to get that question in a live stream, and since you put it in a super chat, I got to do it. Um, I think the FT2 is still the price leader for where you want to be with an amateur radio. It gives you wideband receive, gives you GPRS, APRS, full-featured APRS, digital modes, and it's just a, a, a really good radio. The only downside is the speaker because it's priced to sell now, right? It's, it's the right price. The FT3 isn't out yet, but its price is high. So I'm on the fence if it can disrupt the FT2 being an EDC radio. Why? Because it's expensive. It's, it's very expensive. And, and if you lost it or, or lost it or damaged it, you'd be really upset. It's, it's less likely you damage it because it's pretty robust. But if you lost it, oh man, I'd be depressed. So I am going to get my hands on one soon, though. I promise you, I've got that lined up. And thank you to the, 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 the few who will remain nameless until we drop that video on that one. So thank you for the help on that. Travis Foudre, what's up, buddy? Appreciate your time and efforts. Thank you so much. Oh, man, N-Block Clips, N-Block Clips. I bet this is, yeah, there's a gun in there. Uh, EDC G43, is that, wait, okay, so G42, G43, whichever one is the single stack nine, that's the ones I can't get in California. That's the one I want, I want real bad. And an FT70, also a good choice. Problem with the FT70, the battery. You're gonna have to carry extra batteries. All right, so we talked about the radios. You got a radio that um real quick tom zoofman says what is dmr digital mobile radio i believe i have that correct is basically a uh digitized voice communication via radio so your voice goes into the radio gets digitized into digital sound tones that gets decoded by the receiving radio or repeater and digital radios not just dmr yesu system fusion d star p25 multiple modes that exist in this space all right so we talked radios this is kind of the hardware of radios now let's get to the using of the radio how do you become an effective operator when you're edcing a radio and i wanted to put that quote there on the side that quote came from me that just came from my brain um edc is basically oh jason brown thank you buddy VX6R and an XTM 9mm. <laughs> That's good too. I like my Glocks, but I, I like my Springfield. It, is it Springfield? Or is that? Yeah, I think it's Springfield. 
XTM. XPS is Springfield. Anyway, I think I got that right. My uh, Tyler Marshall says my EDC is an XTS 1500. Okay, very, very good. So EDCing, what is EDCing? It's, it's carrying a smaller, slim set of tools that you can be capable of when you're out and about, expecting that you're not going to have the same level of robustness of tools that you have at home. Right. So a lot of people are, are mentioning firearms in the chat. These are com compact firearms. They're not full size handguns. They're not carrying 1911s. I haven't seen one 1911 mentioned, um, nor have I seen any 357 Magnum full size revolvers. So keep that in mind. There's a kid crying in the front yard. So you're talking about smaller subsets, something that fits in the pocket, maybe a little bit lighter, but is a full tool set that you can use when you're out and about robust something that you like to have in your hand that you like to use a lot of edc is is actually aesthetics more than anything is something how it feels and how you like it so with that said the a's and b's of carrying for me a radio that i'm going to carry on my edc on my person must be dual channel and ideally twin receivers an a and a b receiver meaning they can receive the a channel and the b channel at the same time time meaning no one takes priority over the other squelching the other one out so that it hogs the receiver if you will so you can't hear what could be an important piece of information as someone's just rag chewing on the repeater so i'm a big fan of dual receivers that are in radios simultaneous transmission you don't miss anything very very good very good to have uh, a channel for me is what i call my operating channel and again, we're talking about the A and the B. So if you're on your Baofeng, right, and you click that A, B button, that's what we're talking about here. For me, an A, uh, somebody said 357. Yeah, I, I love 357 Magnums. It's my favorite caliber, pretty much. Um, so I agree. Snub nose 357 is kind of a, kind of a bear to, to hold. So A and B channel, my A channel, top channel is always my operating frequency, my operating space that I'm working in. Likely the repeaters I'm talking on, if I'm on simplex talking to someone, or if I'm on a hotspot, working off of my hotspot, I'll use that. My B channel is my scanning and monitoring frequency. And that's where I'm running simplex. So you're saying, well, you're running simplex on the A, what's the simplex on the B? Often the other band. So if I'm talking on two meter simplex, I'll listen on 70, centi uh, 70 centimeter simplex. APRS likely lives in the B channel because that's generally what the radios require. And again, for anybody that doesn't know it, I'm trying to spell out the acronyms as much as I can. APRS is the automatic packet reporting system. Radio system or reporting system? I think I spelled it out earlier. I'll get to it. I know I did. I think I did. I'm jumping the gun on my own uh, my own slides here. But APRS allows you to kind of geolocate where you are and, and then message other people. Okay, so simplex calling frequencies. So we're going to start talking about programming. Oh, is it relay system? I know I, I, I know I, I always forget that one. But anyway, simplex call frequencies, without a doubt, are going to be the top of your radio programming. At least they are for me. That's my recommendation. Why? It's great for local comms. It's good to have that right at the top of your list. So it's something you check. It's preferable option in an emergency to call for help. It's useful to start a contact when you're running a soda activation and then maybe hop off to another frequency. Or just if you want to know what's going on locally. I know a lot of people say, I don't see, I don't hear anything on, on simplex. Well, maybe because you're not talking on simplex. Put out your radio. Maybe use a J-pole antenna, you know, something you can hang from a tree on your two meter, even on your Baofeng. And give a give a call for a while on simplex. Um, I noticed something I noticed as I've kind of migrated some of my time to HF. People on HF call CQ lots more than they do on VHF. People on VHF will just like drop a CQ or really I'm monitoring simplex and then they never come back. So keep that in mind. Drop your call, you know, drop that you're monitoring, but then come back every couple of minutes and see if anybody's there. There you go. Automatic packet reporting system. Oh, I think I got it. There are many simplex frequencies and will vary by your region. So Google local simplex call frequencies. If you're in the UK, United States, Australia, they may not be the same. Okay, so here is something that was taken directly from the ARRL field resource media me manual, and it goes directly to why simplex is important 
And that's the wilderness protocol. Very quickly, the wilderness protocol calls for hams in the wilderness to announce their presence on and to monitor the national calling frequencies for five minutes beginning at the top of the hour every three hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. while in the backcountry. So what that means specifically, when you're on your simplex frequencies, your A and the B channel, A channel goes two meters, B channel goes 70 centimeters or whatever, and then you call saying, my call sign, monitoring on simplex following the wilderness protocol, and you can even mention that I'm going to be doing this every three hours for the next X amount of hours while I'm on the trail, and you become an effective operator for not just getting out there that you could potentially help someone, but potentially help yourself if you're in a, in a situation. So those are the frequencies at the bottom, depending on what band you're in. And I highly recommend, highly recommend, uh, Jason Siebert already got it, and I posted it on the link. KG6HQD, W6RIP, friends of mine, all Southern California local natives are all big advocates of wilderness, uh, the wilderness protocol. W6RIP just got a search and rescue certification and is still an active search chaser. I'm sorry, soda chaser. And so is KG6HQD. So, sub to both of those guys because they're both making videos now and then. But their back catalog is really good too. So, go watch that. Okay. So, the advantage of the wilderness protocol when outdoors, possibly for a day or more, right? Because you may be going out for a three hour tour, you get stranded, and all of a sudden you're in a situation where, oh crap, I need help. Why the Wilderness Protocol is so effective is you're conserving your battery, right? You're using it only in specific times to call for help or to monitor for others who need help. So you're not killing your battery, which is great. Um, one of the reasons why not to just squawk APRS constantly, maybe turn it on and turn it off and save your battery. So it's, cent it's centralized around the simplex frequencies, specific times of call and durations. And for those interested in MCOM, a good place to start is the Wilderness Protocol. It is. You don't have to technically be in the wilderness. If you're wilderness adjacent and you have a nice 2 meter, 70 centimeter station in your home with a great antenna, maybe you should monitor for wilderness traffic. Could be really good. Yeah. So make sure you check that out. Yeah. Wilderness protocol. Um, look it up again. It uh, is on the ARRL field resource manual. So if you go Google that, you'll find it. Very good. And I'm glad I could introduce some people to that. So simplex continued. Program simplex fre frequencies high on the list. One, two, three, four, somewhere up there because you'll often use them or check them, or you should be. And if someone ever has to use your radio because you're incapacitated, where are they going to start? They're going to start with channel one and two and three and four. They're not going to know any better. Or you could just label it simplex help or, or help, right? And then people, can, they can use that. Smart idea. All right, so repeaters. The rest of your memory space is likely going to be filled up with repeaters. And that's good, right? A large chunk of your HT memory will be devoted to repeaters. Consider, consider taking the time to study local repeater use. Check back often to your programming and cull what is not used. So what I mean with that is if you've ever used Chirp, you pull in all those frequencies and you're like, man, I have 120 whatever memory channels that I've loaded into my room with all of these. Well, you start scanning them and you scan throughout the day and you keep listening and you keep noting which frequencies are just not being used. And what I like to do, and you can figure this out, there's maps that will let you do this. It takes a bit of an effort, though I appreciate that, is figure out the repeaters that are furthest away from you and start culling those first. Start getting rid of the ones you hear nothing on that are furthest away and work your way in until you get down to a, a nice size of repeaters that are active, usable, whatever. California, for example, Southern California, I can max the whole, my whole radio full of repeaters and a lot of them aren't in use. So, you know, keep that in mind. Get out there and use them too because that's what's going to hurt amateur radio in the future is not having people on the radio. Hmm. Dream Beaver 41 says, hey, Josh, remember the song you made about my name? I don't think I made it. I just added Dream Beaver instead of Dream Weaver. That's a song that already has existed. So I did not create anything. I wish I did. I'd make those big, big, smooth jazz dollars. All right. Yeah, so a lot of people are saying they like the Abri antenna, which harkens back to what I mentioned earlier. I like it. It's been uh, durable for me. Uh, but... 
some people may not be having the best time. That's why I linked to Amazon, because if you're not having a good time, send it back. You can try to get another one, right? Maybe it was just a quality issue. No doubt there's going to be Q, Q and A quality QC control issues through China in some cases. But, you know, that's what Amazon's for. That's why I use Amazon. That's why I link everything from Amazon, because their uh, returns are fantastic. So make sure you check that out. Okay, so get your repeaters in order. All right, APRS, Automatic Packet Reporting System. I shouldn't have said anything. I should just wait because I knew I wrote it down. To try and help with all this acronym jargon, I put it in there. I'm trying to do that for these uh, streams now to help out some of the new folk. So for me, and again, I'm, I'm a bit of a ham radio elitist, I guess. Uh, I think that for me, again, for me, I will drop a little bit more coin to get a radio that has a full-featured APRS control on the radio i know the d72 does a better and the d74 does a better job of aprs than this when connected to a computer but on screen i don't think anything beats this ft2 dr and maybe the ft3 will beat it it likely will because it'll be color right yeah so what can you do with aprs why is it important why do you want something like that Aside from just pinging your location, right? So if you were if you were if you were interested, you could go on APRS.fi right now and you could type in KI6NAZ-7. My call sign dash seven. And you will see my trip that I made home from work today. And I live streamed on Instagram the whole way home talking about ham radio with the folks that watch me. So you can do that with APRS. So loved ones can follow you when you're out in the field, having fun, doing with whatever you're doing. Or if you're actively involved in an emergency situation, having that on is a, is a great way to have people keep tabs of where you're at, keep you safe, and also know where you're, where you're at. When you call for help, they can zero in directly where you're at. You can send messages, including using SMS relays, which are basically computers that you're getting to that will then send out your SMS. You can tweet, you can email, you can do all kinds of stuff with APRS. Is that totally 100% RF though? No, we're leveraging the internet a little bit when it comes to tweets, SMS, and email. But everything else, the ability to send just messages, APRS to APRS, works great. It's all RF in the line, and it's all just handshaking that happens. Uh, there's internet that gets involved a little bit, but generally that's how it, how it works. And then you can track users who may be in need of help. So if my dumb body goes up doing a soda activation and I'm tweeting out, where I'm going, what I'm doing actively and often, and I get hurt, people can use that to find me, which I think is good. Okay, so scanning. Uh, I'll make a note on scanning here. This is my just personal feeling on this. I generally scan in two ways. I scan through my pre-programmed memories when I'm in a location that I'm from familiar with. So if going back to my A channel, B channel mindset, my A channel is going to be my operating channel. I'm on my repeater that I like. I'm on my hotspot when I'm talking on simplex. My B channel is scanning through my memories, checking out what's going on, um, listening to other repeaters, stopping for a second. Again, that dual receive capability. I'm hearing what's going on there. And I don't want to listen. I keep scanning, whatever. When I'm in a new area for the first time, what I like to do is flip it out of memory into VFO mode, which is, right, when you click this VFO MR button, click that guy on the bell thing, and I'll take you out of memory mode into VFO mode, and then you're just scanning through the mem all the frequency ranges that that radio can listen on. Some um, are pretty advanced as far as scanning goes, um, so you're basically going to um, have the ability to select bands of operation. So if you've got a radio that does two meters, you can say, I want two meter only. If you have a band a radio that does 70, me uh, 70 centimeters, you can say, I want 70 centimeters only. Or just scan everything that it can do, which is helpful. So uh, 0x Desi asks, are you going to cover the SOS functions? So SOS is kind of a nautical thing. I kind of covered it a little bit as far as the wilderness protocol is concerned we should be using that right ham should be using that as far as sos though the reality is is if i needed help i would call on the simplex frequencies i would call on the simplex frequencies or a repeater if i could hit it but likely I'm going to be out far enough away that I can't use my cell phone. That's why I'm pulling out the ham radio. And I'm going to be talking on anything that works if I need help. 
right? That's going to be what I'm going to do. So there's not really an SOS. It's a just do it. Like <laughs> just find something that works. If there's something going on, use that. R modes, R modes it. KE4TJV working on general using UV82HP. It's a good radio. LG battery and car powered pack. J pole portable. Got my SDR Play RSP1A today. That's awesome. Great new Baofeng waterproof UV9R plus 15 watts. Could be good. Um, so the UV9R plus 15 watts have generally all been kind of counterfeit. Most of them, I don't believe any of them I've seen actually puts out. 15 watts. So buyer beware, beware on that one. Also, I don't know that I want 15 watts or cooking my skin on the outside there. So keep that in mind. So a radio like the FT2DR, I'm going to use this for an example again, when scanning, has the ability to scan in FM and digital at the same time. So it will scan frequencies, and when something breaks squelch or, or goes above the noise level, it will try and figure out what mode it's in, FM or digital that it supports, in this case, the ASU System Fusion. So that's very handy. If you have a radio that does that, obviously use it, right? But that's going to depend on the area you're in. So scanning is very important, very interesting. I use it pretty much every time I pull out a radio. I'll likely kind of hit all my, my bullet points. I'll go on Simplex, listen for a while. Um, sometimes I'll drop a call. I should probably be better at following the wilderness protocol myself because um, I guess I'm pseudo wilderness adjacent, at least for everything facing south and west of the mountain ranges I live in in Southern California. I could probably help out with my antenna. I get out pretty good. Um, but I, I hit my Simplex. I usually beacon a couple APRS, and then I start scanning, and I just listen, so... Brandon got powers. Josh, I got to go. I just got, oh man, 911 dispatch. All right, buddy. Stay safe. Thanks for watching. Appreciate that. Okay, so other things I have programmed in my radio. So we talked about simplex, most important. We talked about repeaters, which is likely your everyday stuff, the stuff you're having fun with, the, the stuff that makes wanting to carry the radio the thing you do. I like to program satellite frequencies because I often carry a. Um, my aero antenna, my dual band aero antenna in my car in case, you know, I get an itch and I'm like, pull up the phone app, figure out what satellites are going to pass, and then I'll try and work them. There's not that many active FM low earth satellites at this point. I mean, there are, but there's not a lot of the easier ones that you're going to take up too many memory slots with. With that said, you're going back to the D72 land if you're going to do that. And sometimes I'll just carry this and not and not use it. I'll throw it in a bag. Okay. Uh, weather stations. Likely your radio will have weather stations programmed, except the Baofengs do not. So you will likely need to program those. FT2DR, the FT60, the Kenwood all have batteries uh, or batteries have weather stations connected. This noise, I don't know if you guys are hearing this water noise, but the kids are doing something. Oh, I think they've got the bath time going. Sorry about that if it's bothering you. I apologize. So F FRS, GMRS, MERS, again, we're talking about programming these into amateur radio radios. That's most likely not legal to transmit on. So keep that in mind. Same thing with Mars. Mars is a military system that you have to have so many hours in and be a basically a member of the system and be an active contributor to it. So keep that in mind before you go out there and, and program those frequencies in. In an emergency, though, all bets are off. EDC is supposed to be a tool, likely one that you're preparing and using and carrying for when there's an emergency. So I can't blame you if you program um, them into your radio, and I don't think that's necessarily a problem. I wouldn't necessarily transmit that. All right. So... Almost the end of this slide package. I swear we're going to get through all this other stuff. But this is fun stuff to remember. Getting your radio into special events, your EDC radio. You say, you look them right in the face and you say, this is a family radio. I'm just keeping in touch with my friends. And that's it. When they ask you anything more about the radio, it's just a family radio. I'm, I, we're just on channel five. That's it. And that's all you do. That's all I've done. Disneyland is considered one of the hardest places to 
pull a radio into and I bring it in every time I go. And when they find it in my bag, I go, family radio. We're talking on Channel 5, trying to coordinate getting on Splash Mountain with the kiddos. You know what I'm talking about? And that's it. That's all I've ever done. Now, at that point, once you get the radio into the park, don't just crank the volume up and listen to the security or whatever you're doing. You got to use an earbud. Be smart about it, right? Don't, don't ruin your day or, or ruin having a radio in the park because you're like, oh, yeah, I'm decoding. I'm decoding their uh, their frequencies right now on DMR. Glendon Blount, 818, he might be a QRP fan. Are you a Yesu 818 owner? Chris says, lol, liar. I'm not a liar. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm actually going to text my wife now because this is really annoying. Okay, the other thing that I do now is carry a laminated license. This is a big thing, and there's two reasons for this. Well, three. One, in case you're ever stopped by the police and you have, uh, they ask you about the FCC license, are you actually licensed? Boom, there you go. Two, if you're going through TSA, hot dog. Um, I carry two, actually. Let me grab this one. So if you're carrying amateur radio equipment... Oh, no, my P.O. box is on here. We're fine. So I carry this guy right here. What else is on here that you may not want to have? Are we good? Are we good? We're good. I carry one like this, and I put it on top of my amateur radio equipment, right on top. Um, so when they open the bag, they see, boom, FCC license. I also have the bill-folded one that I carry in my go bags. What I have to recommend, though, hamcrazy.com not affiliated with us we don't get paid by them or anything like that said they've got 10 percent off their site right now if you use hrcc at checkout now they sell something in fact i'll, I'll pull it up right here and uh and, and i'll get back to you um they sell something that when i first saw it i was like i don't need that what do i need that for let me why is it not opening nope that's not it so, where is it? Come on now. Come on now. Ah, here we go. Okay. <laughs> Let me throw this up here. <laughs> they sell this thing. Why is this cool? $14, right? $14 use the HRCC code 10% off. Why is this cool? You can use this <laughs> to get a discount in hotels. <laughs> You can use this to get it. You can get the government rate on things. It's an FCC license. <laughs> somebody told me that. And I'm like, that is that is like uh, some 4D chess that somebody's doing. Very good. Very nicely done. So 3D5 um, Expedition says, how did you get that license? I never received one from the FCC. Great question. If you go to the FCC website specifically for your login, after you use your login ID, you um, can go to the, the page for your account and you can download those copies of the license. Have your own copy and then you can run your own laminations is exactly what I did. 86 DM Dennis says, never thought to use my ham crazy badge for discounts. I didn't either. Somebody told me, I think it was one of the, uh, the admins. So I think it might've been Chris. I think it was Chris. Yeah, Chris was saying, um, yeah, you use it for discounts. $14 with 10% off. You could get your money back in no time, right? And again, not affiliated with the channel. I just love that so much. I was like, oh, yeah, I got to put that in. Is that it? I don't know. All right. So carry extra cables. Always have your char an extra charger if you can. A programming cable is a bit extreme, but may not be bad if, you bad if you have like a laptop bag you're carrying. Throw a programming cable in there. You know, two is one, one is none kind of thing. Consider extra batteries if you are operating for a long time, you're supporting an MCOM situation, an event, always have more batteries than you think you need. If you have an A-cell charger carriage or cartridge for your radio, bring that, bring an extra battery set, bring a charger, you know, plan ahead for what you think you're doing. Most of the time though, going outside, I just take the FT2DR. It's got a long enough battery. It does everything I need to. And I, I've been switching between the Abri 18 inch and the signal stick. So, yeah, I would uh, I would go with that. 
And then if you can, I know a lot of uh, the soda guys do this. I don't do it yet because I haven't needed to with the signal stick, but KG6 HQD, can't go wrong with what he recommends. He brings a J-Pole, one of those uh, twin lead J-Pole antennas. He always packs one in his backpack. So make sure you think about that. Uh, KI7 says, quick tip. If you have good quality clear packing tape, it can be a cheap solution instead of laminating. You can, unless they can pick it out, and then it kind of looks like, is this a fake ID? I don't, uh, K8MRD radio stuff says, I don't think there is any legality to carrying your license. It just makes it easier. To Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me be very specific. K8MRD, great point. Thank you for saying that. You're not required to carry your license. It's not a fishing license that you have to show when you've got two rods in the water and you're trying to fish with your kid at a local park on a Sunday. It's nothing like that. You're not required. So I do it just simply to like speed up the process, uh, particularly when I've got an HF station and I've got my octopus antenna up and I've got uh, my, you know, 7300 on a box connected to a laptop and cops are getting called on me. That happened. If you want to look at my MFJ octopus antenna review, cops got called. I had that FCC license in my bag. It never came to that because that guy was like, this is a nerd. He's not a terrorist. I need to get the hell out of here. And he was gone. He was like a smoke silhouette when he left. That's how fast he wanted out of there. Um, but it's, it's always good to have, particularly with the TSA. Slap that thing right on the top. It lets them know that you're legit licensed and the equipment you're bringing, although odd, and they'll still ask you questions. It disarms the conversation from being something where they need to be on I don't know if I need to be on high alert. Yeah. K8 MRD. Uh, that's a brother of mine right there. You don't have to prove nothing to no one. Yes. I like it. I totally like it. All right. Do I have one more? Because, man, we are running out of time. Oh, hot spots. Yes. I think this might be the last one. Uh, keeping a hot spot on you, often great. It increases your effective range of communication likely for entertainment purposes greatly which is a lot of fun uh we have a lot of fun whenever i get on there it's always a good time and now that everything's cross-linked with hrcc super cool so make sure ethan if you could post the link if you're still watching post the link to that great website you have that people can get all the digital information bookmark that so when you start getting into digital you can just use that. If not, you'll find it on the Ham Radio Crash Course Facebook group, which is linked in the description. So keep hotspots on you is often a great way to keep at keeping on the radio. Yeah, this is a late night when I finish this one up. <laughs> Remember, you'll need to tether something on the road. I use my phone. It's only as good as your internet connection, right? So if your internet goes down, you're done. Hotspots don't replace knowing local repeaters, having them programmed, even for digital. You still need, and, and actually one of the best tools for being a radio operator in the field is put it in your brain. Put it in your brain so that you know how to program your radio, how to do everything you need to do when using your radio. That's gonna, your most effective tool is, is what you know. And that's why we do this, is put in those thoughts, those, those things, those, those lessons that you learn from doing, right? Because doing, for me, the best way to learn is by doing. Cram that in there. That's how you become an effective operator. These are just tips so that you got the right tools when you need it. And I hope that is helpful. So, yeah. Don says, by the way, I passed my test in the late 80s, so I'm sure things have changed. A little bit. Okay. We are done. Okay. Whew. That was interesting. I got to say, that was interesting. We finished the slides. Let's see. I'm going to check my notes here. Make sure I've got all my notes out of the way. All right. Man, that was good. That was a lot of fun. All right. So we're going to wrap things up. With, I'm going to say thank you to the patrons, but stick around because we're going to do the CW experiment. Semi-experiment, semi-training. Yeah. So we're going to do a, a quick CW-like class. And if we got to run through this a couple of times, we can. We still, we still got some time. We're not running that long. So here's what we're going to do. First, let me say thank you to the patrons. There it is. Uh, Jason Ebert, Carrie Blackwell, Jason Brown, Jason Siebert, David Dancero, Danny Miller, Wesley Magyar, one of the new ones. Thank you very much. Barbara Schrock, also new. Franklin Lewis, Brad Snyder, Dennis Dunderdale. Saw him in the chat earlier. Thank you. Garrett Larson, Jonathan Franson, 86DM Dennis. What's up, buddy? He was in the chat as well. Appreciate that. I didn't see the Wyoming ham. I don't think he's ever missed a show. 
or at least recently, Randall Hinsley, Dennis Mickelson, George Gaini, Andy, Kenny Miyamoto, Ron Thorson, Ken Hall, Corey, oh man, Vuelta, Vuelta, I'm going with it, sorry Corey, <laughs> Mr. Mode, <laughs> good name, Devin B. Hedge, Mark Chase, Raymond Cracker, Geraldo Kelso, K-E-8-H-W-D Rob, congratulations on your extra, Thomas Strickland, Ran Rick Van Thor Rick Van Horn, sorry, it's a little small for me. I'm getting old. Lee Harrell, Corey Sheldon, Brad Nadal, Stephen Hunt, Ronald White, Brian Noskowitz, and the Brew Crew. Appreciate it. So don't leave, because we're going to CW. Mm. Forget your life. I, I would like to do call-in, but we're already almost at the end. We're going to do the CW, and then we're going to go to Discord, and you can talk to me directly there. And if you are so inclined... Go to Discord because I live stream the Discord after chat now on Twitch. Why not? Ah, I did it! Corey said I did it. Okay, excellent. I win. All right. Thank you. All right. So here's... Oh, you know what? Let me go through this really quick because these are important too. I put these on here. This is one of my go bags that I bring with me. Um, it's right nondescript. Looks like a fanny pack. What I put on here is a zip tie and I will sometimes clip... A radio right on the side like that. Oftentimes, though, it lives inside until I need it. So that's this guy. I have a video coming on this. This thing is a really small, lightweight bag. I've had this for about a year and a half. Pretty awesome. My everyday go bag, though, is this guy. And this is a Patagonia 20-liter um, alpaca. I wish it was an alpaca. It's an anacapa. So what I do is I take the little mesh pocket, and that's where I slam in the HT most of the time just like that very seldomly do i ever put a radio on these on these stupid things here because it just doesn't line up right like when you put when you put the the straps on and i usually keep my backpack pretty high this is garbage like this is absolute garbage like i know you can talk into it but like you can't really see it and then it gets stuck when you're trying to disconnect it i hate this um so i take it and i just throw it in the in the little elastic part and it's in there tight and then if i need it i pull it out so that's that my wife is in the chat says josh has more bags than i do that is true and i, I need to make a this is this is for all the ladies that are watching actually it's for everybody that's watching my bags all serve a very specific function they're thought out based off of the goal the mission that i have in mind my wife's bags are just leather and cute and pretty and fashion. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a, a job here. <laughs> anyway, that's enough I'll say about that. But yeah, I got more bags than my wife. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play um, some CW really quick. We're going to go through K and M today. And so how we're going to do this, pretty straightforward. Get yourself a piece of paper. I folded one in half with a pencil and a pen. Um, I'm going to play, I'm going to be playing with an application called G4FON. I'm going to be playing these characters, and they're going to be played over and over. And all you need to do is identify the difference and write down what you think it is. And I'm going to play what it sounds like right now. Okay? I'm going to find an empty frequency. I am not transmitting right now. I have the transmission turned off. This is K. 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 The letter K. This is M. 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 The character is just M. Da da. K. That's all you got to pay attention to. So all you're trying to do right now is identify the difference between da 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 and da da. And this is what it's going to look like. So this is G4FON. This is one of the apps that the Long Island CW Club uses. Uh, their logo is just superimposed on it. It's not actually affiliated with them necessarily. But here's how this works. I'm going to start. It's going to give you five seconds. And then you're going to need to listen and then write down the characters that you hear. It's not going to show you those characters until we finish with two minutes of that transmission. So I'm going to do this along with you. Why not? So everybody, pencils ready? Pencils ready? I'm going to sit down for this. I should sit down. 
It's the first time I'm doing anything like this, so. We gotta we gotta try this out. So. <laughs> Alright. So I'm gonna turn up the volume a little bit because I think I, I muted myself earlier. Okay, good. Okay, here we go. It's gonna count, it's gonna count for five seconds. It's gonna count down from five right here, and then it's gonna start playing characters. And all you need to write down is K or M. Remember, M, da da, K, da dit da. And it's the tempo and the cadence of it that's important. But you're listening, and you're just gonna write it down. Okay? We're going. Here we go. I don't have lead out. Oh my god. Okay, so there you go. So you can look at the screen. Hopefully, if you wrote down the characters like I did, you can match them to the screen. Um, if you're watching this after the fact and you actually did take the time to write down on paper, you can pause this right now. And there you go. So Mike Burnell says, riveting. It was riveting. That's why we saved it for the end of the live stream. I wasn't going to do this right in the beginning. So basically what happens with that is you just start adding characters. You click the character button. Now you have three characters, right? Once you get 100% copy or 90 to 100% copy, you move up to the next character. That's CW. That's how you learn the alphabet. Now, it gets way more complex than that. And there are easier ways to do some of the stuff. And a great resource to learn is the Long Island CW Club. And I highly re recommend them. I'm a member, not affiliated. I'm not getting paid by them at all other than I like what they are doing. I'm really a fan of their open-ended kind of curriculum. You can go to any of the classes. They'll work with you. They have a QSO class that will actually walk you through a QSO. If you, what happens generally is you'll learn how to key the characters faster than you can copy the characters. You'll be better at, at well, it's, there we go. You'll be better at I screwed up my six, but that was my call sign. You'll get better at that than you are at receiving calls and receiving words. So they will get you on a frequency, have you call out in response to people that are already talking, and they will work you through the QSO because they'll listen to you via Skype or Zoom or whatever, and they'll work you through it. That's the only place, only place I've ever seen anything, anyone do anything like that. It's 
very special what they're doing, and I, I support Howard and the whole effort that the Long Island CW Club is putting out. So I will be putting out some more videos with them, um, and there will be way more in the future because I think CW is one of the coolest things in ham radio, personally. So. <laughs> 86 DM Dennis. I know, right? We still got to work each other because, I mean, you're just in Northern California. You should make that easy. So, yeah, if you're so interested, so inclined, I would recommend you check out the Long Island CW Club. Just Google them. Um, I'll try and remember to put the put the link in the description. But hopefully that you've already been able to copy the characters since I've been talking. And, yeah. So we're going to the after chat now. I hope you come along. I'll be simulcasting it to Twitch. I am Angry Shoverbot on Twitch. I don't have the link posted anywhere here. You got to go over to the Discord and get that. I'll post it there. Okay? I had a wonderful time. This was a great stream. You guys absolutely killed me with, with sending those super chats. I think it was mostly just because you wanted to talk about your guns, which I don't, I don't have a problem with. But I appreciate all the love and the support. It really means a lot. So thank you very much, and I'll keep doing what I'm doing. I got some cool videos coming out soon. I don't know if anybody's following me on Twitter or Instagram, but I've been I've been sneaking a little bit of those images out, and uh, man, we got some cool stuff coming. By the way, there's a wedding that's coming up soon, and I may or may not be involved in it, and it's ham radio themed. So look forward to that. Oh, William Ladd! <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Yeah, there's a, there's a ham radio wedding coming up, and I may be streaming it. Okay, bye, everybody. Take it easy. See ya. <laughs>